All right, guys, Saturday, August 5th. This is where it all began, you guys. Starting here, first thing we wake up with the Bible in the morning. Well, actually, I woke up, I had some tea, um, ate some of my oatmeal for breakfast with honey and cinnamon. I like to do it like that. And uh, yeah, start the day off right now with some Jesus. There's the first thing in the morning with some God, the Father and his Holy Bible. And uh, yeah, we're just going to be reading the Bible here um, in our lovely comfort of our home and, and bed. And so, uh, yeah, this first thing in the morning, it is raining on this Saturday, September 5th today. Um, before work here as I travel. And uh, God, uh, we, ju or we just want to pray to you, God, the Father. Um, so we'll start here. Um, we'll do the prayer for chapter 13, the Syrians invade Judea, death of Menelius, skirmish near Modian. Yeah, chapter 13 we'll read today, Treaty of Antiochus 5. And yeah, we're on second book of Maccabees, chapter 13 today. And we are going to be reading the Bible here very shortly. And before that, though, we will start with the prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. God, I just want to do a confession to you, God, this on this fine morning. This confessional prayer to you, God, um, for all my sins that I have committed in the past. And God, I want to forgive you for wasting my time with the slothfulness and treasure and binge-watching these, um, you know, sometimes waste of our time things on our social media, Facebook, YouTube, you know, these clickbaits, these ads and stuff, they get us, you know, these commercials and bad things. They just waste our time and uh, take it away from you, God the Father. We're tired of, you know, not watching things that are religious and good for our health and good for our life, God. And I want to confess for, you know, yeah, the this, this sins of slothfulness, God, for myself and for all us out there, God, uh, we want to confess to our hearts, God, for you, God, to spend more of our time in prayer and with you, God, that you may fill us with life in our lives, all the days of our life remaining, that we and you uh, allow, yeah, that you allow us to live, God, and this life, God, is a most precious, precious and sacred gift that you will. Uh, that you gave us and we don't want to waste that gift god we want to enjoy every moment of it every second of it every life of it every you know day by day life by life that we live and read your word of god your word of truth and your holy bible that we may be filled with it strengthened by it more and more all the days of our life in your name we pray amen father son holy spirit amen Chapter 13, the Syrians invade Judea. Let's get comfy. Ah, yes. This is where it all started, you guys. This is where it all started. It was like day two or day three. I, I just started them from here. First thing, you know, I woke up in the morning. Boom. Right before work. Boom. We get our morning off right started with some Bible. With some good fruit in our lives, you guys. And so... I like it. It's, it's comfy, you know. It's We want to be comfortable when we read this good fruit that we are about to consume and eat and have it captivate us in life. It's so delicious. We want to be also enjoyed and relaxed and, and also delicious as we enjoy this delicious consumption. And so, ah, I'm nice. I'm comfortable, you guys. It's luxurious, you know. And I'm reading this nice Bible here. Look, look at this. Look at this. Let's let, let's follow along. Let's do a little. Look at that. Chapter thirteen. The Syrians invade Judea. In the year one hundred and forty-nine, Judas and his men learned that Antiochus, Eupater, was invading Judea with a large force, and that with him was Lysias, his 
guardian who is in charge of the government. They led a Greek army of 110,000 foot soldiers, 5,300 horsemen, 22 elephants, and 300 chariots, armed with scythes. With scythes. Death of Menelaus. Menelaus also joined them, and with great duplicity, kept urging Antiochus on not for the welfare of his country, but in the hope of being established in office. But the king of kings, aroused with anger of Antiochus against the scoundrel when the king was shown by Lysias that Menelaus was to blame for all the trouble, he ordered him to be taken to Bor Beroia and executed there. In the custom customary local method, There is at that place a, to a tower 75 feet high full of ashes with a circular rim sloping down steeply on all sides toward the ashes. A man guilty of sacrilegious or notorious for certain other crimes is brought up there and then hurled down to destruction. In such a manner was Menelaus, the transgressor of the law, fated to die. He was deprived even of a decent burial. It was altogether just that he who had committed so many sins against the altar with its pure fire and ashes should meet his death in ashes. Skirmish near Modian. The king was advancing his mindful his mind full of savage plans for inflicting on the Jews worse things than those they suffered in his father's time. Mm -hmm. Let's reread that. The skirmish near Modin, because this, you know, God the Father, look at that, or in, the, in his father's time, but God the Father is the physical representation of all our fathers up there, and the dads, he's the perfect father, so that's why he's our role model, to confess our sins to you guys in life. Okay, skirmish near Modin. The king was advancing, his mind full of savage plans for inflicting on the Jews worse things than those they suffered in his father's time. Or in in his father's time. Th uh, this king's father's time. When Judas learned of this, he urged the people to call upon the Lord night and day to help them now, if ever, when they were about to be deprived of their law, their country, and their holy temple, and not to allow this nation, which had just begun to revive to be subjugated again to blasphemous Gentiles when they had all joined in doing this and had implored the merciful Lord continuously with weeping and fasting and prostrations. For three days, Judas encouraged them and told them to stand ready after a private meeting with the elders. He decided that before the king's army could invade Judea and take possession of the city, the Jews should march out and settle the matter with God's help leaving the outcome to the creator of the world and exhorting his followers to fight nobly to death for the laws of the temple, the city, the country, and the government. He pitched his camp near Modian, giving his men the battle cry, God's victory. He made a night attack on the king's pavilion with a picked force, of the bravest young men and killed about 2,000 in the camp. They also slew and led Elephant and its rider. Finally, they withdrew in triumph, having filled the camp with terror and confusion. Day was just breaking when, it, when this was accomplished with the help and protection of the Lord. 
Treaty with Antiochus, V, 5. Roman numeral 5, V. The king, having had a taste of the Jews, daring, tried to take their possession by a stratagem. So he marched against Bethzur, a strong fortress of the Jews, but he was driven back, checked and defeated. Judas then sent supplies to the men inside, but Rehodekas of the Jewish army betrayed his military secrets to the, to the enemy. He was found out, arrested and imprisoned. The king made a second attempt by negotiating with the men of Bethzur after giving them this pledge and receiving theirs, he withdrew and attacked Judas and his men. But he was defeated. Next, he heard that Philip... All right, guys, sorry about that. It cut off on the recording. Um, as my morning alarm went off at 7 o'clock to wake up, I woke up before the alarm, though, but the alarm cut off the recording in the middle of the way. And we were on uh, right here. So we'll continue where we left off. But he was defeated. Next heard Philip, who was left in charge of the government in Antioch, had rebelled, dismayed, he parlayed with the Jews, submitted to their terms, and swore to observe their rights. Having come to this agreement, he offered a sacrifice and honored the temple with a generous donation. He approved of Maccabeus and left him as military and civil governor of the territory from Ptolemais to the region of Gerenes. When he came to Ptolemais, the people of the of that city were angered by peace treaty. In fact, they were so indignant that they wanted to annul its provisions. But Lysias took the platform, defended the treaty as well as he could, and won them over by persuasion. After calming them and gaining their goodwill, he returned to Antioch. That is how the king's attack and withdrawal, withdrawal went. Chapter 14, antagonism of Al Alcinus will begin tomorrow. And with that, we will close in the prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, God, for this day. We love you, God. And all that you do and all that you provide us in life. God, thank you for helping us to realize that we are sinful and we will be slain and tortured and executed if we don't go on the right path, just like they did in this, uh, in your chapter today. They were slaughtered, executed, um, tortured these, these um, men who were bound in prison and, 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 these, and doing these bad crimes. God, and, you know, we... Um, God, but that's why you sent your one and only son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to um, die for us sinners so that we, may, that we might have a chance to enter into the kingdom of heaven. God, yes, we fall sins of the flesh um, in this world, but day by day we're getting stronger and stronger to and going to church more and reading your Bible and more so that Satan doesn't have strong of a whole a toll on us to go to take us to hell god no we don't want to go to hell with satan we want to go to heaven with you god the father and see you uh, jesus christ there um, in heaven because we're tired of these demons and these fleshly earthly worldly desires and uh, taking our toll on us god and our bodies and our lives day by day but we are going to keep fighting them and strengthen them you know, um, strengthening against them with your holy angels, with St. Michael the Archangel, slaying us and our guardian angels within, trying to protect us from these evils and the Holy Spirit within to vanquish these demons and help us take us to the good, righteous, holy path with you, God the Father, so that way we may draw closer and closer to the path to heaven. And in your name we pray, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. See you guys tomorrow.